So Jackson State, Alabama and um Grambling, FAMU, Mississippi Valley State, Alcorn, and Southern are top ten in the 2022 HBCU rankings. So seven out of the ten teams are from the SWAC. That tells you that this conference has a chance to be something special. And I'm going to chime in. What's good with everyone? This is DJ's Raw and Cut Truth, giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. And before I start, I want to say shout out to 24-7 Sports. One thing I give credit to 24-7 Sports, when they do their rankings, they combine all of the rankings of different sites, put it into one data, and it accumulates a more accurate ranking most of the time. Now, they're not always right, but they're right just enough. But can you believe that? The SWAC has seven teams ranked in the top 10 in the 2022 HBCU recruiting rankings. Now, this is mid-January's rankings, and it will look a lot different when signing day occurs. The second part of signing day, that is. But this is impressive. The fact that these teams are not done. Now, we all know about Jackson State, the five star and Travis Hunter Jr., and then Kevin Coleman, the number one slot receiver. Uh, Jackson State has a total of three four stars, nine high level three star commits, and a lot of them are transfers. As you know, a transfer three star commit has more weight, more experience, and a lot better than your average three-star. So Jackson State has one five-star, three four-stars, nine three-stars. This is unprecedented for an FCS school to produce so much talent, and they're not even done. And then Alabama a &L. Three four-stars, three of them all transfers but productive players that will contribute right away. Nine three-stars. Now, Alabama A&M took the transfer portal route rigorously. Transfers like Darren Turner that came from Arkansas, four-star, 6'3", wide receiver, big body, big play guy, will do numbers in the swag. And Coach Maynard, his offense fits to his skill set. Uh, being on the lookout for him. Also, Charles Bell from uh, Marshall, who has playing experience, a uh, veteran player. Look out for him. The Bulldogs bolstered the secondary with transfer from Illinois, Marquez Beeson. He went to Duncanville High School. Shout out to Duncanville, Duncanville, Texas. Four star DB will sure things up, and it's a big need. And lastly, Jaron Williams. I would love to go down this list, but <laughs> I'm not going to make a, a long video. But Jaron Williams is a transfer from USF, 6'2 quarterback, dual threat. He will be competing with Quincy Casey. Should be a good battle. Whoever is the quarterback is going to have a lot of weapons. Be on the lookout for Alabama a and &M. Again, the swag is just leveling up. And now Grambling. Grambling has impressed me so much. They're not just trying to settle for transfer players. They're dabbling in the high school recruiting uh, landscape. And it's balance. They got the quarterback in Kanjaya Halloween, who is a transfer from UCLA. Four-star quality quarterback. Knows how to run, but uses running ability to pass. 
Now, for everyone who has watched the swag, a balanced quarterback does wonders in this conference. And look out for a Kanjaya to do his thing under the tutelage of Hugh Jackson. Grambling has also added more size, especially in the wide receiver position. Uh, shout out to Tyson Bordeaux, who I believe has a lot of potential. Uh, they've added a lot of speedsters. Be on the lookout for Grambling. They have always been known to have defense. Defense was not the problem last season for Grambling. It was always offense. So I expect a good quarterback battle. The offense is going to be sharp. Uh, they've also added a transfer from SMU to play defensive back. That's going to bolster the secondary even more. So expect a faster, more aggressive Grambling State team. They're not going to just sit there and let teams uh, just outscore them. When you play Grambling, when you play the G, it's going to be a four-quarter game. Now to FAMU. What I like about FAMU, just like Grambling State, balanced recruiting, not only settling for transfers, getting high school talent, because you got to develop these players. Um, look out for Eric Horn, who is a linebacker but can play safety, uh, coming out of Iowa State. Very reliable player. Um, when he plays... You're going to see his impact and will be a great addition for Coach Willie Simmons. Uh, Jalen Gross coming out of Florida State. Big offensive lineman, 6'7". Uh, good size, good hand placement. Look for him to contribute right away. Uh, and keeping the players home. Coach Willie Simmons does a great job making sure the Florida players stay home and not leaving that great sunshine state that they're in. Uh, they've already acquired a commitment from a quarterback from Vanderbilt. That's going to help big time. No offense to Rashawn McKay, but Rashawn McKay was not it. And I know, fam, you could do better. I've always said this, FAMU is a solid quarterback away for potentially being a SWAC champion. Now, the problem is Jackson State is a lot better than they were this past year, just based on the players they've picked up. But you could also say that FAMU has improved roster-wise than last season. So something has to give. Mississippi Valley State made the list. Not surprised, Coach Dansby, a Jackson State alum, is doing an excellent job. If you're talking about a coach in, in the SWAC and all of the HBCUs who do more with less, Coach Dansby is the number one name. He does more with less. He doesn't have the facilities, doesn't have the fanfare, like the popularity other coaches have, but he's very respected in the community, and he's doing a great job. Let's say Coach Prime leaves Jackson State four to six years from now. He'll be the first call this AD makes. Trust me. But I like how they're getting experienced players in the JUCO route, doing a little different than what teams in the SWAC are doing. You know, some teams in the SWAC are getting JUCO players as well. But Mississippi Valley State, dabbled in the JUCO market better than anybody. And they added some size. They added some speed. Uh, I like the TJ Goodwin's uh, signing uh, coming from Trinity Valley Community College. Has good size, 6'5", 200 pounds. Uh, he can manage the game for him. And do not be surprised if he wins the starting quarterback job. I'm not going to say it's guaranteed, but he has a good chance. But under the tutelage of Coach Dansby, uh, he would have this quarterback ready to go. I'm going to be excited to see their progression. The problem is for uh, Mississippi Valley State is that the SWAC is going to be the toughest 
it's been in a long time. Just my hunch. But if there's a man that can lead their team to some type of success, it's Coach Dansby. Now to Southern. One thing I respect about Southern, not only their uh, famous band, but Southern has a lot of culture and history at their school. And when Southern does well, it's great for the swag. Uh, they have changed a lot of things. Coach Rollins is not there anymore. And they replaced him with Eric Dooley, the former coach of Perry a and Excellent hire, I believe, because he has Louisiana ties. Uh, he did a great job with Perry v a and turned their program around. Uh, some players that I think will contribute uh, Joshua Short from uh, Greenville, Mississippi, a safety, rangy, uh, extremely athletic, dominant in the rough. And then they have a toll lane transfer in Colby Phillips. Had experience with toll lane, played in an American conference. He'll come right away and do his job. Uh, we all know Southern has the athletes. They have a lot of potential. What Coach Dooley would do well is be creative with play calling. Uh, it, it would not be a simplistic offense like it was last season. And Southern actually had a chance to beat Jackson State if they were just more creative. Uh, at times, they get too simplistic and depend on a run too many damn times. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, that's going to change. So shout out to Southern. And again, the SWAC is going to be something. It's going to be a four-quarter games throughout the league. Uh, it's hard to predict what records these teams will be, but you wouldn't have it any other way. The goal is to have the swipe the top conference in the FCS. Lastly, Alcorn State. Coach McNair will depend on these two transfers, I, I believe. Uh, Jarvion Howard from Syracuse and Montario Hunt from Rutgers. One thing Coach McNair does when you start to doubt their team, believe that they're not gonna make it far, they usually, mean an Alcorn, they usually exceed expectations. Never doubt Alcorn. This past season, we all thought that Alcorn was gonna have a worse record than six and five. They proved a lot of us wrong, and even though they didn't win the swag, they were on a losing streak. They lost to North Carolina Central, and it felt like the sky was falling. And then they started to go on a winning streak, and they almost made it to the SWAT championship game. So never count out Coach McNair. He'll have his players ready. But again, this is only the mid-season recruiting rankings. Uh, so a lot of these teams are not done fulfilling their recruiting boards. But on signing day, the second phase of signing day, you'll start to see more. But I'm excited. Shout out to all the subscribers. Shout out to all the content creators. Peace and blessings. Peace and love to you guys. Like the video, share the video, and I'm out.